Street Food. Street Food Season 6 in full effect right now. I just want to let you guys know off the bat that I post snack only videos on my blog streetfoodinternational.com. So in case you're watching these videos but you just like the snack and you don't like the guy who's talking on and on about his life, if that's the case, I'm not sure why you're still watching, but whatever the case may be, at streetfoodinternational.com you can find snack only videos. Check it out if that's what you're into. It's time for our first road trip of the season. Our friends John and Lee just had a baby in China. Yay! Let me Having tell a baby you about in China. how Lee is uh, awesome because okay. she had her baby in China. What was the worst part and what was the best part? Okay. You don't want to know the worst part. I got shocked. I got electrocuted. Seeing things not only on my spouse, He's not kidding. but on other people's spouses. John and Lee live in Henan province, so my family and I took the high speed train to Zhengzhou and then a bus from there to the nearby city of Xinjiang. It's about an hour outside the capital. What's what's special about Xinjiang? Supposedly it is the birthplace of Chinese civilization. Huang Di is from Xinjiang. The Yellow Emperor Huang Di has basically reached legendary mythical status in China. But he was a real dude. He ruled somewhere around 2600 BC during the late Warring States period, and he is said to be the originator of the centralized state. It was also believed around that time that his rule had cosmic authority. His birthplace, by the way, is highly contested, but don't say that in Xinjiang. Now, he is not to be confused with Emperor Qin, who also called himself Huang Di. I'll be telling you about Emperor Qin later in the season. He's the guy who built the Terracotta Warriors. One among many of the differences is that Huang Di claimed to be the son of heaven, but Emperor Qin said he was the son of the dragon. He is not the original Huang Di. Huang Di's authority was such that a lot of the emperors who came after him tried to claim to be his descendants because he had the mandate of heaven, so they wanted people to believe they also had the mandate of heaven. He's basically considered to be one of the founders of Chinese civilization. So he's a mythical-ish, but probably real figure who was born in Xinjiang. Probably. Xinjiang is a city, but compared to Xi'an or Zhengzhou, it feels like a small town. There's an offshoot of the Yellow River that runs through the town, and people are noticeably more friendly as compared to Shanxi, where I live. I'm just walking across the street, the taxi totally gave me the right of way. This one right here is about to do it too. That's how you know you're in Henan because uh, that would never happen in Shanxi. The people are much nicer. Through Henan, people are just quite friendly, so. Yeah. It's a nice place. John and Lee teach at a university in Xinjiang with a lot of foreigners. And behind that university is an awesome place to get some street food. John took me out to sample this trio of snacks. Xiangsu Jiliao. This snack is a bit of East meets West. We've got strips of chicken that they bread and they fry in front of you. It's not sitting out so it doesn't get cold and nasty. It's super fresh. They add some cucumber and some lettuce, maybe some sauce. You can get different fillings if you like. Now, I normally don't recommend uncooked vegetables on the street, but this shop was really clean, and its proximity to a foreign university is pretty much a guarantee that you're not gonna get sick. I mean, there's always exceptions, but, you know, in general. That snack was for my wife. I had some of this. Yeah, it's Joe. Now, Joe, we've seen before on this show, but this one was different. First of all, it's not made with rice. It's just kind of like a corn starchy liquid that's in this giant, awesome looking pot. They mix in some sugar, some raisins, black sesame seeds, nuts, and other stuff. Lianzi means lotus seed. Honestly, I don't know if there are actually lotus seeds in this or if it's a metaphor for something. What I know is it freaks you out when you drink it. You're drinking and then out your peripheral vision, you see some stuff coming up the straw and you kind of, whoa, what is that? You don't know why you're drinking it. It's basically like a corn starch watery thing that then you chew it. Walking around this market, we saw some robotic noodle chefs. We tried some fried noodles. I tried a Henan Rojia Mo, which was definitely different than the original Xi'an version. Finally, we had some Kao Yu. Now this is technically Lanzhou style. It's a uh, fish, they cut it down the middle, and then they grill it with some onions and some spices. Now anytime you eat fish in China, you're talking about bones, you're talking about risking potential death by choking. Now in this case, I would say the flavor of the fish is worth it. It was good. There was a lot more to see in Xinjiang, which is why I'm also releasing episode 7 right now. Click the link, you can check out the campus where John and Lee work. It's very unique, it's very cool, plus there's more snacks. So, click on over there, watch it now, or watch it later. Watch out for the parasites. Peace. Street food. Watch my new Chinese language show here. Support the show by becoming a patron here, or visit my blog, streetfoodinternational.com. 
there's so many ways to snack. <laughs>